In this presentation, we are going to look at uh, fitting a, a regression model. Okay, now so what I have here is a data set called cheeses. Okay, and what I have here is first off a response variable called taste. Okay, and then I have or, now that's going to be our y variable, and I got three predictor variables or independent variables as they're also called acetic, H2S, and lactic. Now essentially, what I want to do is use these three predictor variables. To come up with a base to sort of come up with a prediction for taste based on these three variables. Okay, so what I got to do here is, by the way, we can ignore that. That's just case. That's forget about that. Okay, so essentially what we go to do here is go to stat and we go to regression. Okay, now um, there's a couple of useful things there like fit a plotted line, but it, you know always look up those all those are always handy so essentially what we'll go down here is go to regression and fit regression model okay model the relationship between uh, categorical or yeah so you can have a read of that there now the response variable here is going to be taste so select that okay and then the rest of them are continuous variables so they go no that goes down here that goes down there now they're all continuous variables. We might throw in a predictor variable the odd time as well, but like just have uh, uh, sorry, a sorry a categorical variable. So you can do that as well. I don't have any in this particular example, but they are handy. Now let's just ch check through this and see what we have. So model, what do we got? There's regression model. Can we add in interaction effects? Something that's quite handy, but that's actually a bit advanced for a lot of undergraduate statistics courses. So let's not use that. It's handy to know. You might use that in your job, but as far as we're concerned, not here. Uh, options. So weighting, confidence intervals. Yeah, that's nothing to. That's sort of set up nicely. So we're just going to leave that alone. Uh, again, if you're going to really advanced stuff, you might come back here later on in your career. Uh, coding. Uh, nope. Uh, stepwise. Now, stepwise is interesting, but it's almost worth a separate lesson plan on its own. Stepwise regression. That's the case where you have so many predictor variables that you don't need them all. But what we're going to do is save that for a different lesson plan. So stepwise is very interesting, almost too interesting to talk about here. Graphs. Um, the what we do here is just have a look at the, the residual plots. Always handy to have a look at that. Again, this is actually sort of so interesting; it's worth uh, looking at on its own. But I just sort of include them here in this time. time. Results. Uh, yep, all of that sort of stuff there. We'll throw in the Durbin Watson test statistic. Okay, always handy to have everything in there. So method and uh, analysis of variance, model summary, coefficient, regression equation, fits and diagnostics. Okay. Um, everything there is actually pretty good. I'm throwing in the Durbin Watson test statistic. Do you know what? I might actually just sort of leave that because it sort of fits in with the diagnostic plots, and probably I might sort of like talk about it when I'm looking at those. So that's related to di model diagnostics, okay? Uh, storage was just like we'll leave that. So click OK on that. Now we're gonna get a whole bunch of output here. Any second now. There we go. That's our residual plots. Let's come back to them shortly. Looks good so far. So let's just look through what we have here. So this is all our, uh, this is a regression ANOVA table. Okay. And uh, everything looks to be in order there. Okay. And um, what it's saying, it's sort of saying there is actually, I'm just sort of picking up on this already, that uh, the regression table, uh, the ANOVA table, there's a lot of useful, interesting information there. Um, sort of what you might do there is sort of look at these things here, like p-values and so on. So it's sort of, I'm just sort of picking up on this, and this is not significant. It's sort of, in a crudely put, uh, what we're saying here is that acetic acid, whatever that is, is not having a much enough effect on taste. That's a bit of a crude interpretation, but it's really how to interpret this. Whereas the other two with high p-values, they're actually sort of thinking, uh, look, looking to be uh, stating the case that H2S and lactic are very useful in predicting taste. Okay. Now let's go down. Model summary: R squared, adjusted R squared, and so on. Uh, prediction R squared. This is actually just a sort of case of how useful this model is. There's very different. There's a couple of different procedures here. Um. Uh, but there's a uh, R squared, adjusted R squared, and prediction R squared. 
they are just essentially to uh, give you a sense of how good the model is as a predictive tool. Okay, 65.18 percent is actually all right. It's not bad. It could be better, but it could be worse. Okay, uh, so it's 55 percent. Uh, essentially, they're just sort of how good the model is. Okay, and could you improve it by collecting more data or whatever? Now the coefficients. Okay. So the key thing I'm looking at there is the coefficients, which is sort of, let's actually scroll down here a bit. And let's see if we can get the regression equation. So essentially, you use all these here to build up this regression model equation. So that's essentially, you know, how you would sort of predict the value for taste based on this data. So whatever value you have for acetic, whatever value you have for H2S, whatever value you have for lactic, you sort of uh, do something, you can sort of put, input the values there and try to predict a taste score. Now, p-values, um, not significantly different from zero, okay, uh, or not, not significant, so it's like we don't have any, uh, uh, the, the constant term, or the, in, uh, the intercept term is, that, that, that's actually, I'm not so interested in that, but this is very interesting here, these ones here, this is from the ANOVA table again, sort of saying that, you know, the true relationship between taste and acetic uh, is that true relationship, like the, the correlation, co as the regression coefficient, is a true regression coefficient zero, we're failing to reject that null hypothesis, okay. Uh, essentially, what it's sort of saying here is that is not very useful in this model, and we, we might get rid of it, that's for a different, um, that's for a different uh, video. A VIF, this is to do with multicollinearity. Okay, again, very interesting, uh, but I'm going to sort of wait until we have a, you know, it's worth a video in its own right. VIF stands for variance inflation factor, and that is related to multicollinearity. Uh, so go down here now, and we have a look at the, uh, the, the unusual diagnostics, uh, or the unusual observations. And sort of says that observation 15 here is quite unusual. It's been flagged as a large residual. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to look through your data, you might have a look at that and see what happened there in case 15. Then we get our plots. Okay. So this is residual plot. So this is for the residuals. Uh, it looks pretty good there. Um, what we should be looking at here is the normal probability plot. And the dots there follow the sort of the, the 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 line for the most part. You get that odd little outlier there, but it's sort of what's happening there is essentially we're thinking like the nor the residuals are normally distributed. Okay, here what we're looking at is uh, to see how they're distributed. They are okay. Are they? Is there any sort of effect there, funnel effect or anything like that? So what we're looking for there is uh, heteroscedasticity. Okay, different vari the variance different uh, differs along the range of values. Doesn't look like it there. There's a mild funnel effect, very mild, but that's not enough to go on. Okay, histogram of the um, out uh, of the residuals there. So that just backs up our notion that the data is normally distributed. We get the odd outlier up here. Again, not worth uh, losing the sleep over. And the observation order. So what we're looking there for there is autocorrelation. Doesn't really um, look like there's any particular pattern there at all. Okay. Now, so essentially, it looks completely random pattern as as if they're above and below the line. So if there was some sort of trend evident there, a strong trend evident, uh, we would sort of be like that would that would be cause for concern. Anyway, so that's getting a a, simp a regression model, multiple linear regression, and we're going to leave that there because there's. More to talk about after that, okay?